In this video, I'm going to be going over how you actually would implement the GeoHash algorithm. If you want to understand what the GeoHash algorithm actually is and how it works, I recommend watching the previous video first. For this example, I was really torn between using Rust or R for the example, but I settled on R. If you have a preference for one way or the other, just let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. The first thing that we need to do is define our X and Y values. Here we're going to use 19 and 47 respectively. Next, we need to specify the precision of our geohash. For our example, we're going to look at the full 12 digits. So let's set precision equal to 12. Then let's instantiate two vectors that we'll use to search along the X and Y axis to encode our values in binary. Each vector will have three elements to represent our two intervals. It will have a lower value, a midpoint, and an upper bound. Next, we need to pre-allocate the vectors, which will store our binary encoding of our X and Y values. We only encode 32 bits for our X and Y because when we interleave them, we're gonna have 64 bits. And that's kind of the theoretical maximum we can have at the time being. We're gonna begin to encode our X and Y values. And the simplest way to do this is actually through a for loop with I in one through 32. We're gonna first check to see if it falls into the upper interval. If it's greater than or equal to our midpoint, it falls into that. So if that's true, we're gonna assign the binary value of one. Then we're going to adjust our lower bound. Our lower bound then becomes the midpoint. And if it doesn't fall into the upper bound, it's gonna fall into the lower one and it's gonna get the value of zero. And then if that happens, we need to define the upper bound to be the midpoint. And lastly, we need to recalculate the midpoint because either the lower bound or the upper bound has become the midpoint. So it needs to be recalculated. And once we've done that, we've gone through our entire for loop we can see how our binary has been encoded. Now we repeat the same thing for Y, where we check to see if it's in the upper bound. If it is, it gets the value of one. And if that's true, we adjust our lower bound. And if it's not, it gets the value of zero. And then if it does get the value of zero, we adjust our upper bound. And then we recalculate the midpoint again. And now we get our binary values. The last step is to interleave them. And this is made really simple if you're an R user, because the vectors package has a function called vec interleave. It's a little bit more challenging in other languages. So now that we have this, we need to encode it as a geohash. We're gonna do this by splitting it into groups of five bits. This first line, it's gonna split it into groups of five. And the second line here splits our vector into a list of vectors. 12 is actually the limit. Because 64 is not perfectly divisible by five, we're gonna have a remainder. And that remainder is four. You can see that we have actually 13 groups imposed to 12. But that 13th group, only has four bits. We end up having to drop it. So that's what we do. That's what we do. We select the first through the 12 elements of this list. We're then gonna need to be able to encode those bits. So we're gonna define a bit lookup vector. So if we select the first element of this vector, we're gonna get zero. That means whatever the binary returns, we have to add one to. Let's convert these groups of bits to integers. And I'm just gonna work on a single example to illustrate how it works. We're gonna take the first group of five bits and then we're gonna paste them all together. And that's one, one, zero, one, zero. Next, we're gonna use this str toi to convert our character representation of bits into an actual integer. And here we're specifying it's coming from a base two encoding. And now we get the value of 26. Then we look up the 26 plus one position in our bit lookup. We do that because r is one base index. So we get the value of u. That seems like a lot of things. So the natural thing to do is make it into a function. Here, this base 32 conversion is just gonna be a simple function in which defines our bit lookup. Then it pastes together the sequence of integers and converts it into an actual integer, adds the value of one because our position needs to add one to it. And then it's gonna extract that position from our bit lookup. So now we're gonna use that function to encode all of them. And the way that we can do that is by using per map. And this line is gonna return a character vector of the values that we get. So what we're doing is we're iterating through our list of five bits and we're applying applying the base 32 conversion function. Once we do, we get U2ME2K56U54B. Then we can actually paste these all together to get our geo. And that's it. Take a moment to look at what this looks like in R all together. So let's look at an implementation written in R. It's a little bit more thorough than what we just saw on the slide. So first we're gonna define our X and Y, then we're gonna define our precision. This next line actually calculates the number of bits that we really need. Since we don't actually use all 64 bits, we don't have to go through 32 um, rounds of this for loop. We can actually calculate how many times we need to go through it by figuring out the number of total bits that we use. Half the numbers come from X and half the numbers come from Y. So if we have six characters in our geo hash, three of them are really coming from our longitude and three of them are really coming from our latitude. So what we can do to figure out the total number of bits that we need is we divide our precision by two. And then we find the ceiling of that because odd numbers divided by two are not gonna actually return a whole number. And then we multiply that resultant number by five because that's how many total bits are gonna be needed for each number. So we have this n bits. So since we have six, 
figure out our n bits, we need 15 bits from each number. We instantiate our x vowels and our y vowels, and then we pre-allocate x bin and y bin. If we look at x bin, it's just 15 zeros, and y bin is going to be the same thing. Now we can go through our for loop, and we only need to do one for loop because we're doing the same number of bits for x and y. Here we check to see if it's our upper bound. If it is, then we readjust our lower bound as described in the slides. In the else statement, we don't need to calculate zero because it's already there. After which we recalculate our midpoint, and then we repeat the same thing here for our y values. We recalculate the midpoint. Boom. We run our for loop. We can look at y bin and x bin. Now we interleave them. So next we need to actually split our results. And if we look at the results, we create a sequence along our interleaved vector and we divide by five, then we take the ceiling of that. The reason we do that is because if we print this out, it's gonna be partial value. But once you hit five, it's gonna be one, and then it's gonna increase. So if we take the ceiling of that, it's always gonna be a whole integer. Ceiling, boom, boom. And these become our groups that we're splitting our vector upon. We're gonna do that, we get our bits, and we only take one through our desired precision, which is six. Next, we define our base32 conversion function. And then we apply that function using the vapply to get our indices. After that, we paste it all together and we get our geohash. Awesome. I found this to be a really fun exercise to totally understand how geohashes work from the ground up. I had used them, but I didn't truly understand them. So I hope that by going through this, you feel that you understand them as well. Um, thanks for watching if you made it this far.